lighting or anything. We're just going to do this out here. I've got the new microphone set up. So uh, I'm going to go and grab something to drink. Real quick, uh, sorry if it's shaky, you're not on a tripod right now. I had a knife come in and it came in free from Blade HQ. And uh, I was... I was making a post and I said, you know, hey, how, you know, this knife is free. This is the best tech, best techman good boy, which is part of best techs. I'm trying to find, uh, I guess I'll just get some water. Um, so this is part of best techs budget line of knives uh, that they've released and it's the best techman. And so this came free with the order of the other knife that I was told would fail. Um, so could not figure out why they were giving this knife away. Uh, somebody told me that uh, Metal Complex had three of these and they all failed. Uh, spine whack, which I honestly, I don't remember seeing. Hey, Will, I don't remember seeing Metal Complex do a lot of spine whack and testing and things like that. Not, not disparaging his channel. It's usually just tabletop reviews. I don't know how much actual testing gets done. Um, but I'm typically not a big proponent of spine whack, but what somebody told me is that all three of his failed. Now, we're gonna test it and see, and then the other knife that I was told would fail is this, my new Microtech Amphibian. And so we're gonna test that. We're gonna do some spine, I'm not gonna do some like slamming and spine whacking, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about the dangers of spine whacking and things like that. So um, as soon as, How's the audio, by the way? Uh, I'm using the new microphone. Does it sound good? Is the audio good? I'm just curious. So I'm gonna test these. We're gonna turn this around and we're going to, uh, I'm gonna get you guys in the tripod and turn you around. But like I said, I just wanna do this quick. It's not gonna be a real long live feed. And we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about some stuff. Is it more consistent than previous? Because I've got you guys all hooked up to my actual new audio system that I'm using for the channel. So we're gonna use, as Jared did in his video, we're gonna use the back of my strop and uh, we're gonna do some spine whack. Not hard spine whacks because I don't think they're a very good metric. I think you can cause knives to fail and cause damage to knives by doing spine whacks. I think that the hard spine whacks you people see people do it are just pounding it. Uh, I don't think this is a valid test, and we'll get into that when I start doing it and explain why. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to do this because for a free knife, uh, I'm kind of impressed with this Canu designed good boy that uh, is coming out through um, Best Techman. And I have another announcement I'm gonna make. Uh, something cool that might be happening. It's not a definite, but it's something cool that might be happening. So. Uh, let me make sure I've got all my stuff up the way I want it. I'll get you guys in the tripod. I'll get you turned around. Um, I'm going to switch power cords. Uh, that was weird. I'm going to switch power cords because right now you're on a battery bank so that I can walk around and do stuff. Do you guys want to go see the dog first, though? Where's the dog? Let's go see what the pup is doing. Let's go see what Chunk is doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. Get a toy. Get a toy. Yeah, get a toy. Okay. Okay. Production assistant, you're going to hang out outside with Isabel. Don't, don't get my cord. All right. So that's that. Just had to go do that. So, um, yeah, let's get out here and we'll get, so I've got everything I need. It's just going to be quick and we'll talk about some of the things. Now I'm getting you guys in a tripod here. So if there's any changes to the audio, you guys let me know, because that means that the cord has shifted. So let's go ahead, and so I got you in the tripod. And uh, now I gotta switch positioning of the trans, uh, the, the uh, transmitter, or the receiver. And I'm gonna switch power cords. So, um, yeah, thanks Streamlabs. Don't forget to hit the like button, not subscribe. Please do subscribe. Now, here's the cool thing. Can you guys still hear me nice and clear? Because I have completely walked away from the Tripod. I'm completely across the room grabbing something, which is the nice thing about this. So hopefully the audio has remained constant. Let's get you guys in here like that. Okay. Cool. Now, this is, let me get my reading glasses on so I can see. Let's get the readers on. This is the Best Techman 
good boy. And this is the Navy good boy. And if guys have not dropped a like, absolutely please do so. This came when I ordered this knife. It was a, uh, it was an in addition to, it was basically a freebie when you, re when you purchased a specific um, amount of like dollar value from uh, Blade HQ. And so I've got this here. Now I already have tested this. So I'm gonna tell you, I don't believe it. Um, these were being given away from Blade HQ with a purchase order, I think it was $160 or more. And uh, it's a button lock and it's it's a nice little knife. I, I dig this knife. I just filmed a review of it yesterday, a first day in pockets, because I'm kind of impressed with it. Unique grind on this D2 blade came really sharp. It's thumb stud and button lock only. But when I did a short saying that it came free and I couldn't figure out why, people were saying that it failed. And when it failed, they said that it was a failed spine whack and that it happened to uh, Metal Complex on three different versions. And then there was a, a guy that commented on one of my videos telling me that he had seen um, cutting board reviews, which is a channel I don't follow, um, say that his uh, Oh, Ramlock failed. His Ramlock failed, and I saw the video, and he was doing, and we'll talk about the dangers of that later. Uh, he said his Ramlock failed a spine lock test, and then he modified the knife to get it to go all the way over. So we're not going to talk about all of that, but he, I was told that both of these knives would fail. And uh, 34 people, only four likes. Please drop likes. It helps get this up the algorithm. So what I was told was that when he did a spine whack, that this knife failed. Now I'm gonna tell you, spine whack tests are dangerous for a couple of reasons. You can definitely damage your knife, especially on a button lock because the plunger is thin in the middle. And so if you're doing really hard spine wax, what's gonna happen is you can actually bend that shaft and then the lock doesn't work properly ever again uh, because it bends it. And then the other thing is if it does fail and you're holding it like this, which is exactly what happened to cutting board reviews. Not a very smart, I mean, I've, I've had people tell me that it's like say bad things about his channel. I've heard people say it. I saw the way he was doing it. I was like, well, that's the dumbest way to do a spine whack. Cause he was holding it just like this, even though he was wearing gloves and that knife snapped shut and it cut the crap out of him. Um, so if you can do a spine whack, get it in the right, get it in the right position and then make sure that you're not gonna have that snap shut on you. Now, I personally prefer what I call the constant pressure test on a knife lock. So you put pressure down. So what I'm doing is I don't have my fingers in the, in the failure path of this blade and I'm pushing on the spine and I'm pushing down, trying to break the hinge. And I've, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm 6'3", 230 pounds. I'm a pretty strong dude. I can make, I can make locks fail like this. And I did this a couple times. I did not find a failure. I did the same thing with this knife. And I'll tell you another reason that I don't agree with doing spine wax is when you spine whack, you induce shock. And when you induce shock, you can actually cause the lock to rattle loose and then allow a failure of the knife. So, but if you're going to do a spine whack, you don't just smack the crap out of it. Those are fairly decent spine wax I'm doing. I know you probably can't hear it as well because I'm wearing a lapel mic, but no blade play, no change in the lockup on this knife. So I don't think that this lock will fail. And we'll do the same thing with my new precious amphibian. Now I'm not touching the lock. I wanted to make that clear. I'm not at all touching the lock to prevent failure. I'm just simply that's a good spot. So you can see we did some, we did some from good solid uh, wax on that and neither one of those failed. So I don't know what's going on. Now let's get into why I don't agree with spine wax. Spine wax can actually cause damage. Knives that typically fail a spine whack a lot of times, let me know if the audio changes again. I wanna see, I'm gonna walk pretty far away. Uh, I'm just curious what my limits are on this. Knives that typically fail a spine whack, and I'm trying to get my knife case out here, 
and get, I got one here, here's another one. Knives that typically fail a spine whack um, are liner locks, frame locks. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of button locks fail. I've seen button locks get damaged, but liner locks and then frame locks, and this is, this is my other precious here, my uh, Norseman, my Grimson Norseman. And the reason being is they fail spine whack because that radius that is here has a tendency to, to want to kick over. The crossbar locks don't typically fail because of the, the way that they're in there. It comes across and it locks in on a point and it's covering a good area of the blade as opposed to it having a radius. It slides forward across that point and it stays locked in. As much as I like frame locks, they are much more prone to failure because these areas are radiused. It's not straight across like it is on a, uh, a crossbar lock where you push it in and it's locked all the way across. It's on a radius. And so you can induce a failure if that slips off. And if you have a knife and you get it and you do the constant pressure test, like I said, I like to do where I put some pressure across and I see if that lock's gonna shift at all. If you find a knife that does that, return it that lock will fail. And that's a much more accurate depiction of what you're going to have. Vosteed Thunderbird failed. Was that a button lock? Fook Ducey says, I had a, a Vosteed Thunderbird fail the lightest spawn tack, but Vosteed replaced it immediately. So it was a button lock. I've really never had a button lock fail a spine whack. Now I have done, I did a video of it and I didn't, I didn't release it because I felt so bad about it. I, I had to buy a guy another knife. He was like, yeah, do a spine whack. And I bent the plunger. Like I said, you can actually damage a knife. You can damage a knife doing spine whack. Um, and I bent the actual plunger. Uh, I bent the post in it because it was a lot thinner post. And it wasn't a real expensive knife. Um, but like I said, these are much more prone to failure because this one you can definitely, this is why I grabbed this one. See how that tang, that lock tang, it's, it's not a straight angle, it's a radius. Well, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and you can see on that lock point. Now, the other thing you have to think about on that is, you see that spot right there? That's the only point where that lock, everybody thinks that that lock bar is engaging all the way across. No, it's a very, very small portion of that lock bar that's actually engaging. It's just that little spot right there. That's the only place where that lock bar is actually engaging the lock. And that's why when I, when I see people do stuff like, oh, well, I polished that lock tang and I did, I was like, you could definitely screw that up. And no matter like how gentle you think you were being about it, you could definitely screw up the lock interface. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a thing. And then when you start doing a spine whack, what you're doing is you're forcing impact. You're forcing tension onto these two portions. And if this happens to be a titanium lock bar without a steel lock bar insert, like as much as I love this knife, no steel lock bar insert. I would never do a spine whack test on this. You know why? Titanium, while it's strong, is soft. It has the tensile strength. It's definitely tensile strength stronger than steel. However, it's soft. It's much softer than steel. So when you do a spine whack, you will cause that titanium to deform and knives are gonna deform on their own. So if you're doing spine whack testing, you're inducing shock and, 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 and things to that knife that are going to cause deformation. And it will, it will cause deformation and things like that. Now, some knives are definitely going to be less prone to damage like this one. This one's gonna be less prone to damage. Do you know why? Because as opposed to it hitting that small little point, as opposed to when I slam this in and it hits that small little point on that very thin liner, as you can see right there, it's a small little point on that very thin liner, you are doing a spine whack. You're basically driving that little point into this big crossbar. See how it sits in there? You're hitting that in and it's, it's, it's going to, as opposed to inducing that, that impact into that small little point and then on the lock tang, and then possibly causing it to fail, maybe bending your lock bar, you're basically just pushing that up into it. So I don't see this lock being something that's gonna fail. I, I, did, some pre, I did some pretty hard spine wax on this one. This one's mine. Uh, Will B's is still here. Speaking of which, 
not to digress, I apologize, but if you guys are interested, anybody that's looking for a full custom knife, it, it's not my cup of tea, but I will show you guys right now. This is Will B's, he's selling this. This has never even been in a pocket. Hit me up. Um, Will, if you could put the community Discord up, if you're interested in that, um, in this knife that has never even been carried. If you're interested in this, hit me up on the DM side of the public Discord and I can get you in touch with Will B. That is Green uh, Westinghouse Micarta, uh, uh, Timascus, and Damasteel. So... This is, uh, this is something that I was trying to sell for him. If you're interested in that, um, you can go and you can find my public Discord. It says join the community in the description tab of my videos. And you can hit me up there if you're interested in it. How many wee stonefish do I have for myself? I have none. I have none. I have a prototype, a production prototype that came to me from them. And um, it, uh, it's currently at Scab's house uh, for Choir Boy Cutlery. Um, so here's another version of the crossbar lock. You can see what's going on a lot easier in this one than you can in my, uh, than you can in this one, uh, because this is a more traditional access style crossbar lock. When it drops across, you can see how it just moves straight across as opposed to having a radius area. You've got that full bar is making contact and it does it make contact all the way across which is why i have to, i have to say and i i've argued i love pe people like well why do you love uh frame locks so so much um i just like them i've always liked frame locks i think they have a distinct feel they have a distinct sound when they open and close but there are many locks that are much stronger uh the crossbar lock is another one. I've never had a crossbar lock fail. I've never had a crossbar lock fail on me. Um, I've never had a button lock fail on me. I have had frame locks and liner locks fail. I have. Um, and then you have kind of another variation and people argue with me, this is another variation of the liner lock. It truly is. It's an internal liner and I don't know why but I'm not charging at the moment and I need to, there we go. There we go. Let me know if that changes the audio at all. Um, the compression lock is basically a liner lock that's turned on its head. And I've never, I've never even heard of one of these failing because what happens is on these, um, your liner gets pinched. So there's your pin, there's your lock face. And so that, that, that compression lock gets pinched in between those two points. And I've never heard of one of these failing, never. This is probably, it, it, if, it's probably the second strongest lock on the market. People complain about it. I heard a bunch of people complaining in my life, uh, one video, the short I did, they're like, oh, why are, you, why are you compression lock with a clunky piece of crap? And I was like, it's, when you look at sheer strength of lock, one of the strongest locks on the market, probably triad lock is that is the strongest than that one and then some of these newer versions of the crossbar locks shortly after it um as a matter of fact other companies now are starting to do variations of the compression lock uh this is that rs chaos by vosteed and you can see it's basically a compression lock it's basically the it's basically when you look at it it's the same thing that i did by adding this cme uh you've got a uh, a button that controls your compression i like the cme because i find that i like doing it with my index finger i like an actual compression lock with cme uh i absolutely love it blue font will yeah will's a will's a uh, mod he's also one of my paying members and he sent me one of these um so i like the button the button actuated compression lock in theory, but I haven't tried one yet. I'm not as big a fan of this one because of it's on the, on the opposite side. I like the actual compression lock with a CME on it. And you can get these over at OCD for EDC. Um, he sells them on his, uh, he has a website where he sells these that is linked in all of his videos. Uh, and it, it came quick. It was easy to install. It just uses super glue. Um, and the, the fact is it makes it so much easier for 
someone that's left-handed instead of trying to get the compression lock when you have to put your finger all the way in there if you're left-handed it can be problematic and i absolutely love it and then i've actually gotten to handle a couple of left-handed button locks and i'm like wow i wish all knives were left-handed button locks because then you can use your index finger because i just find it more satisfying and then the reverse flick on this but yeah so let's get into the dangers of what you can do to yourself when you do a spine whack. It's a dangerous thing to be doing because um, you're trying to make that knife fail catastrophically and have that blade come over. And then if you've got something that is ridiculously sharp like this, uh, this Microtech Amphibian, which is probably one of the out-of-box sharpest knives I've ever purchased, if you're gonna do that, you better be really careful. Now, like I said, I've seen people do it, and the second I saw um, cutting, bo uh, cutting board reviews doing a spine whack this way, with his hand in there, I was like, that's going to end badly, and I was right. And if you guys have not dropped a like, please do so. There's 35 people here, and only eight likes that I can see. I'd like to get that ratio up higher. It helps push us up the algorithm. So, um, I have a Shiro I'm messing with. Should I even try the stress test on it or are their tolerances good? You don't need to try it. Um, I've, I've, Shiro's are usually pretty strong. They're usually, they, they're quality, quality knives. And when I'm talking about doing a pressure test, I'm not talking about actually trying to get it to fail. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm just gonna hold it like this and I'm gonna push up and on both sides and try and like I said, fold it like a hinge. And all I'm personally looking for is did I feel the lock slip? Is there any change in that lock engagement? Can I feel a wiggle? And if I do, I'm gonna send that knife back. It's the first thing I do when I open any knife. If I feel any movement, Jared, if you guys remember, Jared did a video where he cut himself pretty badly doing the exact test I was talking about. But well, not even that, he was pushing on, like he had the knife in hand and he was, I'm not gonna do it, but he was pushing even I know that this knife isn't gonna fail. I still will not do this. He was pushing on that to try and get it and it snapped shut on his finger. Um, so if you feel any lock engagements, one of the first things I do when I get a knife is I just check to make sure it works. That's a much more valid test. Spine wax are not a good test because you can really make knives that shouldn't fail, fail if you do a spine whack. Um, doing the right kind of testing, like this knife. Let's do a little bit of pressure on it. Do you see any flex? What you're looking for is any flex in that lock bar. Does it feel like it's slipping, anything like that? So, uh, and I don't. You're gonna, doing a spine whack, and I know I said this at the beginning of the video, when you do a spine whack, when you hit this up against something, you're seeing a shock down the blade. And even though it feels like there is no play, there's a microscopic amount of gap in here that you're gonna get. And so when you hit that, like, oh, that actually hurt. I hit that sharp point right on the nerve in my finger. It made my finger go numb. Um, when you hit that on that and you send that shock down the blade, what it will allow that lock bar to do is shift ever so slightly as that travels down the blade. And then when it re-engages, it might not re-engage in the same spot. You do it again, and then now you've failed the lock. So it can be misleading because you're doing it. You're trying to make it fail. I've, I've never seen it as a good solid thing. Um, a much better test is the weight hang test that they used to do on the, uh, is it the shark lock? Yeah, the shark lock, the Demco shark lock. When they would hang the weight, constant pressure, is that lock going to slip and fail? Much, much better test. And they did it on triad lock. Now triad locks, are different and I have a couple of triad locks here. Where's my, this one's gonna be the easiest. There's two of them here. So triad lock, triad lock's a really good lock to, to demonstrate this with because they are the strongest locks you're gonna get. So a lot like the compression lock and this is why I say this is up there with that. So you have that pin there and then you have your actual lock bar that is on, okay, let's get that in focus, Mike. Can you see the, the actual lock bar is right there and then it starts to travel and that lock bar, that, that stop pin right there, it's gonna pinch in between, right? You got kind of the same thing on this. So you have this deep keyed area that this lock drops in. This is a Spider Co. Josh Almighty, how you doing? Um, and if you guys haven't subscribed or dropped a like, please do so. 
Thank you very much, Streamlabs. Um, you can see that there's a deep key on this and then there's a button and then you have that pin that's in the middle. So when this drops in, it actually absorbs all of the stress and impact. And this is another lock that doesn't have just a small point. Triad locks a lot like a crossbar lock, like you see on here. They make contact all the way across instead of having a radius area. And so now you have that pin that's in there that absorbs a lot of the stress and impact and things on these locks. Never would I think that this would fail a test. I still wouldn't do a spine whack on this knife, uh, even though they say that as these age, they get stronger. Um, this is another one that has it. You can see the pin there. You see that deep keyed area. There's a lot of marriage of surface in there. This is the cold steel tough leg. This was a gift from my father years ago. It was the first knife I ever got with a triad lock. And so this is the tough light by cold steel. There is that extra additional pin in there that absorbs the stress. So great, great lock. One of the strongest, it's the strongest lock you're ever going to get, um, in my opinion, is the triad lock. Um, but like I said, if, if you, if you're testing locks, there's a lot of ways to test a lock that are better than a spine whack. Now, back to this knife. I don't know exactly what the issues were with this. Um, I have a couple minor issues with this knife, but this free knife tested and did things that uh, a lot of other knives it won't do like it I, the, th the testing I've done so far it's it's really holding up pretty well too but it's in d2 steel and stuff like that but this is a cutter I'm gonna tell you right now very very nice cutter what's that Zach says if you need try to make sure I didn't miss a previous comment that he's he's talking about kind of stunned the hype was actually real uh about the just got my Damascus vision and Damascus Conspiracy, my first two CVVs. I don't like the vision. I actually had the vision lock fail. Um, the lock that's on the vision, I absolutely had fail. Blade Walker, what's up? What's up to you, bud? Um, I actually had it fail. You can go find that video. Uh, I said it was dangerous. Jim Skelton agreed with me, and a lot of people are like, oh, wait to, wait to, like, to induce a failure. I was like, I didn't. It happened to me. Now, it, it did happen to me one time going in pocket. So with the lock that's on the vision, it's a lot like the shark lock. But you can pull it back, and if you if you pull it back and then lift up, it will dis, the lock will disengage itself, and basically now you have a lock bar that is not locking in, and it will swing open and back and back and forth. And everybody's like, "Oh, you just don't know what it was for. It was to make ease of maintenance." And I was like, "I don't care what it's for. Like, I accidentally did it once, and then I did it twice. I'm not saying it'll fail. So, let me explain. So the lock that's on it is a lot like the shark lock. So you have to just imagine this." There's a lock bar on top, like a crossbar lock, but then it's got the little fin on top, like a shark lock. And when you pull it back, you can actually unhook it, unhook it and pull it back. And then it will disconnect from the lock radius. And then you have to pull it back and push. You have to get it back down in its spot. This is enclosed on the lock that's on the, I can't think of the vision R. It, it's not, you can actually remove it. And I did it by accident a couple times in um, yeah, it doesn't pull down and unhook. So it would pull down and unhook. And then you basically, your knife would just, it didn't lock. There was nothing locking it. And it happened to me one time when I was just deploying the knife. And then I was like, what the fuck did I just do? And I did the video and everybody's like, oh, you know what you're talking about. You're doing it on purpose. And I was like, it literally happened to me accidentally in the video. And I don't know if it's because of the size of my hands and the way I was deploying the lock. And everybody's like, no, you're just crazy. And then Jim Skelton was like, absolutely, um, absolutely correct. And people were like, there's no way that would happen going to your pocket. And it did. I didn't film it, but it did happen to me going to my pocket. And I'm glad they fixed it. The R was dangerous. And I had so much hate on that video. So if you guys are not subscribed, please do so. And if you have not dropped a like, do I have a knife with pubic hair on it? No, I don't. I mean, I could probably draw one on it with a marker. So, um, <laughs> you know, well, I don't have one. Okay, look here, check this out. This, I guess if you look, you could buy this knife and you could say that it kind of looks like it's got 
pubic hair on it, I guess, if that's what you want. But like, let's let's try and keep the adult commentary down as minimum as supposed. I like to keep it family friendly as much as I can. I've only dropped one f bomb in this one. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going. Um, what is this? If you're, if, if I'm going to, into a situation where you could have one folding knife, I'm going to carry a triad lock. Yeah. Um, so I will be, might be here. I know he's usually at work. Oh, there he is. So it is four o'clock in Ohio. So, uh, yeah, Will is selling that knife. So if you're interested in that Casey Gray, hit me up. There's the, there's a public discord where you can, where you can do it. Um, Timascus knife. Will, how much were you? How much were you selling that for? Yeah, and guys, if you keep that up, I'm just gonna kick you out of the chat. I think I think somebody already got held, so my moderators will hold you in contempt. So it's just it's just a thing. I like to keep it clean. It keeps me from having to rely on super chats. If you guys do want to drop super chats, by the way, that's an availability on here. Um, you can drop to support the channel, but if you guys get the, the chat too weird and too adult, um, it will uh, absolutely demonetize this video. So um, yeah, I'm not seeing any issues with this. I'm not seeing any issues at all with this. I don't, um, I don't think, yeah, so there you go. Will's wanting $1,000. Let's talk about that knife for a little bit. Uh, so this is, a, and Will, you can hit Will up in the private Discord as well. He's on that private, uh, the public Discord, I mean. Um, it's not actually Discord. It's, uh, what is it, Gilded. So if you want to drop that in there again, Will, I'd appreciate it. So he got this knife, he won it, and then he's not going, to, he, he's not going to carry it. He wants to sell it. Um, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. Really good workmanship. Casey Gray knives are awesome. Um and it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. It's just not a knife for me. Look at that pivot. Look at that fluted pivot. So that that link that Will just put in, join that. Um, join that if you're interested in that. Let me see here. Um, uh, that's not true. That is not true, Space Ghost. You absolutely can get warnings from it's you are responsible for the chat. On top of that, I don't want people leaving. So just here's the deal. I've invited you into my house. Just please abide by the rules I'm saying. At any rate, what is this? I've always heard about how much of a tank they are. My beefiest knife is a Farron Forge Archbishop. Would notice a crazy difference. The 8010 light or something. I don't, you know, um, I have right here, I have some of my Ferrum Forge knives. And I gotta tell you, I I love the fact that they're doing really good production stuff now. So we'll compare we'll compare two of my favorites. Uh, these are my personal Ferrum Forges. I have one of their production knives and I have one of my personals here. What was this? Um, Okay, I don't care whether it's true or not. I'm just asking you guys to keep it within the realm of being somewhat family friendly. So somebody was asking what the cold steel on the left was. This is the this is the cold steel mini or the cold steel tough light, and this is the Voyager Tonto. So, um, but this is. The Ferrum Forge Allurus, which is one of their production versions, and this is a very, very good knife. And then this is my Ferrum Forge Master Blaster. Now this one is definitely different, but the, the nice thing, okay, what's my favorite, somebody was getting, somebody asked, what's my favorite American knife with a frame lock? This one, this is by far my favorite frame lock knife that I've got. This was a gift from uh, a couple of my friends. Uh, they had Elliot do the carving on this. This is a very, very specific type of knife. It was uh, a commissioned piece um, and it is done in a fashion that I wanted. It's all hand carved. It's got a copper inlay down the middle 
and then it's all been hand carved on top of what was already really, really nice knife. But the cool thing about Ferrum Forge knives was, even if you got one of these over the top carved pieces, and I have another one here to show you, um, even if you got one of the over the top carved ones, you basically, if you got one of the other ones, basically what you're paying for was the work that went into, um, the work that went into the carving and things like that, and the customization that went into these. These were maker's choice knives, and then this was one that was a commissioned custom. Um, ev even if you got one of their baseline, it's not like when you get a, a version of a knife that's done budget and a version of a knife that's done high end, you're still going to get the same level because basically they took, this was just a stock Master Blaster and they took it and customized one of their baseline $550 in-house mid-techs, um, the 100% USA made knives right here. And they just, they modified them to a point and carved them up and made them beautiful. And this is one of the smoothest knives. Now, what I was gonna say is, this is my favorite USA made frame lock folding knife. And this is one of the smoothest, like everybody talks about the frictionless action that you get on a, a Sabenza. And when you get to this one, it's, it's basically as smooth, if not smoother. And a lot of it has to do with how they built the knives because they were hand fit up each one of these. It took them about two weeks. It took them about two weeks to build um, some of these knives with the carving and everything. The dog came in and he's squeaking his toy. Um, to build something like this, it would take like two weeks of carving. And then it would take, uh, you know, the fit up, it would take them a couple days to build each one of these knives. Uh, everything was measured. The stop pin was, you know, stop pin was different depending on how it would go together. Each thing, it was tuned and put together separately. And so that, that, what, that's what gives it that smoothness. And the nice thing about their knives were all these points, the internals are shouldered and measured. So they had different sizes for all these to, to give them the, stand, the distance between the scales they wanted. So when you put it together, you could crank down um, almost, I mean, pretty much as tight as you wanted. You could crank down everything as tight as you wanted, and you didn't have to worry about putting tension on that because all of these set your gap. They set your distance, which was really, really cool. Some of the best knives I've ever owned have been some of my Ferrum Forge Knifeworks knives. Um, was it, how old was my OG Fortis now? 10? I'd say it's probably about 10 years old. I don't know the actual date on that. I couldn't t give you an actual date on the finished construction. I need to put this away. I need to oil this and put it away so we don't get any rust on this. Like I said, if you're interested in buying this, Casey Gray, uh, Will wants a thousand dollars for it. Uh, you can hit him up in the public discord or the public gilded server that I have. I am going to be sending this back to him. Typically, I would say hit me up because it's going to be here, uh, but it's not going to be here. It's going to be uh, back with him before too long because I'm sending him also his uh, his Microtech. Oh, I wanted to point this out. You guys want to see something cool? Um, the, the knives that we got are a little bit different. Can you see the difference in the stop pin? I mean, aesthetically... Functionally, they're pr pretty much the same. Um, there's very minor differences. See, the stop pin's a little different. But also, that lock surface has been changed. And I'm thinking, and I want to try and reach out to them because I do know some of the guys at Microtech. I want to see if maybe that was a mitigation for the failures that people were talking about when they would do the spine lock, your spine whack test. Do you see what I'm saying? just ever so slightly material removed in there to prevent that lock from failing. And I think that mine goes in a little further than Will's does, just ever so slightly. It, I could be wrong, it could just be my imagination, but, so the date on mine is January of 2024 and the date on yours is November of 2023. So, don't understand knives with Warren Cliff. Well, allow me to explain to you why a Warren Cliff is good since I have a couple of knives here that are different. We'll move these out of the way and I'm going to focus on these two knives. I will explain why I like Warren Cliff's American. Um, 
Warren Cliffs for me are a super functional blade and I'll show you why. So when you're using a Warren, now they're not good for everything. I have to admit they're not good for everything. This is a super straight edge. So when you're cutting, it cuts all the way to the point. You don't lose, your blade doesn't slip off. This has got some belly on it. And, and I have knives that are, let me see. I, I think I have one that's much, here, this will work better. See how this has a much more pronounced drop off. So you have all this straight. So when you're cutting, when you're cutting here on this flat, you've got constant cutting, cutting, cutting. When you get up here to the point, unless you're doing something where you're cutting around something like, like small game or things like that, when you get to here, your material's just gonna slip off. Materials slip off that end. If you have one of these, you basically have much more straight line cutting surface that continues to make contact with whatever you're cutting. The other thing too is, this is a much higher angle and I'm using the belly of that. If I'm wanting to cut something, as you can see, which gets done with this knife a lot. If I'm wanting to cut something at the very tip in a straight line, I definitely don't have to change my angle. I can see exactly what my work surface is and not have to lift the knife up as well. Another thing you can do is if I'm wanting to get up under and cut something, I have this rounded back and then the tip and I can get up under without puncturing what I'm working on and I can slide down through without needing to get my hand down to where I can get that point in. So I'm saying I can actually do it at this angle instead of this weird angle for me. So not perfect for everything. Keen's custom tools. Thank you for the two bones or the 20 bones, brother. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't have my bell or anything. Um, what was this? So that's why I like Warren Cliffs. And to the point I even made one of my, one of my custom knives was a Warren Cliff. And also one of the production versions is, um, you don't care. You don't care about the bell. Um, well, Broccoli Skull and I, thank you. Um, there's been a horrific thing. I don't know if you guys remember, I used to have a uh, zero tolerance skull that sat next to Broccoli Skull. Uh, it got uh, it got some sort of solvent on it. It was foam and it, it melted. But guess what? Chicken's still here. So yeah, there's a, uh, American American Warney, excellent control slices, stabilized. There's uh, it can also be made the case. The straight Warney also makes a good self. -def they do, they do because the same thing. Like you can do snap cuts all the way out to the point, um, and things like that. But. I, my cowbell, hang on, my cowbell is, the cowbell's over here. And the nice thing is I can still talk to you guys while we do it. I'll get the cowbell. I gotta find the, I gotta find the baton. The petite baton noir. I don't have it. There's a little black stick. I took French in school. Well, what can I hit this with? Here, let's hit it with a knife. There you go. There you go. There's for the 20 bones. There's your cowbell for the 20 bones. I don't know what I did with the stick. Um, uh, there you go. Um, but what I was saying is, uh, back to back to the original point. This is one of Farron Forge Knife Works production versions of a knife. Uh, this is the um, Allurus, and this was my 2022 knife of the year. Um, I've actually modified the finish on the handles here. I did a, a high sheen uh, on it. Yeah, please, please keep it clean though. I don't want, I don't want people getting, I don't like people getting put in timeout. Just pretend you're at my house and you're with a bunch of my other friends, which is basically what we're doing. Um, which one's this? This is Will's. Put mine back in my pocket. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? I forget what I was going to say. Oh, Oh, but what I was saying is, uh, so they have got some high level, um, high level knives, but their quality control when they get knives in for OEM, um, they go through all these knives. And I think you heard me talk about it. If you watched the video where I was at Elliot's office, 
Um, when knives come in, they QA the knives. It's not like a lot of other companies where the knives come in and they go directly to vendors. They come to Elliott's shop first. I don't think that at the volume they're putting them out now, I don't think they check every knife, but what they do is they do a random sampling uh, before they go out. And then if they run into issues, they go and they find other, you know, they go back through and they do more. So if they find a couple issues, then they go back through, uh, they go back through and they'll, they'll re evaluate the run. And if they find any, they're bad, they, do, they don't go out if they can fix them because they are knife makers. There's a lot of other companies that when they do a knife, uh, and it comes in and it comes in and they do an OEM run, they have to get those out immediately. Like they refuse, like they, they don't check them like you, like a lot of us would, um, as knife makers, they're, they're designers that are getting their knives put into production. So, um, you're welcome, Zach. It was, it, and it's still, it's still a nebulous term. Uh, and if you guys haven't dropped a like, please do so. Uh, but what I was saying is they do a lot of QC and then because they have a shop where they can fix them, Elliot will take those knives. And if he can fix something that's wrong with one of these knives, say it's got a little issue with lockup, uh, he actually will take that to his shop, not the office, and then try and just uh, try and rectify that. If it's got blade play, if it's off center, Elliot knows how to fix those things. And so does Chris. So they'll do that. Um, but what I say, what I'm, what I'm getting at is now that their production knives have come so far and they really are picky about how they do their collaborations and how they do their, uh, their knife production and the level of quality they want, the company knows. And so the company has we knife company has stepped up their game and in turn their newer knives are better for it and i don't see a big drop in quality from their american made stuff to what they're having done because they are so picky now there's definite differences i would never say that this knife is as good or i'm sorry this knife is as good as this one it just isn't um it it is it is an amazing knife and it's because there's literally 48 hours of work that went into every one of these knives. And then there's another two weeks, if not more, of carving that went into my personal one. Now, I do have a new favorite Wee Knife Company knife. And it came to me directly from Tashi Barucha. This is the Wee OAO. And it's in my knife case because if I don't put it in the case and forget it's there, I will carry this every day. Even though I don't like integrals, this thing is stupid light. Um, can you see those dovetailed carbon fiber pieces that cover all the internal hardware? There's only one screw on each side that holds it in place. That is incredible. And on top of the fact they removed all that material for the carbon fiber, they also pocketed everything out. And this even still, you can see how everything's hollowed out in here. There's a steel lock bar in this one. And then just a beautiful, beautiful knife. These were not cheap. These are a pricey knife, I have to admit. I could not have afforded this knife. I, and I didn't intend for Tashi to send me one, but he definitely did. This is the Wii OAO, the one and only. And a uh, lot of thought and work went into this. And... Uh, he really nailed the design and Tashi's a great, great dude. He, um, he definitely, uh, put a lot of thought into this and, uh, like sending this to me from, I, I was like, Hey, do you have one? Well, I really, I reached out to Tashi and I was like, Hey, I can't afford that knife right now. Um, can you send me one, like one of your prototypes, something that you've carried. I'm, a lot of times I reach out to companies and I tell them, hey, I don't need a free knife. Um, I, I just want a knife to review. And I was like, if you have one of those, one of these laying around that's yours, if you send it to me, I'll get it back to you. Or if you want to go to another reviewer. And Tashi said, I quote, well, I had so much fun filming with you and it got, I, I enjoyed it. And you were so kind to give me so much time when we filmed. I'm just going to send you one. And I was like, you don't have to do that. And he's like, already am. I need your address. And he sent me this. And this one came from France. This didn't come from We Knife Company. This came from Tashi Barucha's personal 
he only had a couple. He had one of each version, and he grabbed me this one and sent it to me. And I'm typically not a fan of green carbon fiber, but that is very, very good. It looks like the old 1980s and 90s camo. When I was a kid, everybody wore these camouflage t-shirts, the old weird jungle camo pattern. That's what it reminds me of. It definitely reminds me of that. And then somebody mentioned Ferrum Forge Fortis. I have an OG one-off Fortis that is also hand done. Elliot did all this hand, all this texturing and things down here by hand. And it is a two-tone black ceramic and uh, satin. And people are like, oh, that, that ceramic can't be as strong as you say it is. I, when I went home to Ohio before my dad passed away, I had to get stuff ready. Um, yeah, he gave it to me. Yeah, he gave this to me. Tashi sent this to me as a gift. And I was, I was over, and I love Tashi. He's a great, great dude. I'm looking forward to getting to see him if he comes to this next, um, if, I, if I can go, this next knife show. So all hand textured to give it that hammered look and then anodized a, a really brilliant green. Um, but people are talking about the ceramic coating and I, I tell everybody how strong it is. That ceramic coating, what scratched that was I was cleaning the terminals, the battery terminals on a tractor. When I went home, my dad had gotten cancer. He'd already been diagnosed as, as terminal. And I was trying to get stuff winterized and ready um, so that they could uh, have the tractor available to plow snow on the farm. And I used that to clean the battery terminals on that tractor. And I've cut a lot of stuff with this knife and that, that nano ceramic has held up really, really well. You see there's some scratches across the spine and everything. Nothing really has scratched this. The only thing I think is stronger than, the only thing that I think is stronger than the nano ceramic is DLC. Um, DLC absolutely holds up incredibly well. I have cut so much stuff with this knife and not even come close to scratching the uh, DLC on this. I'm always just so surprised and astonished with titanium anodizing, still my favorite knife handle material. Uh, I just redid the anno on this one. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. I redid the anno on this one, so it's a two-tone. You can see how in the flats, it's a, a lighter blue than on the, or I'm sorry, down in the low points, it's a lighter blue than on the flats. So, yeah, guys, I'm not going to do much more than this. It's been a, just coming up on an hour. I wanted to see how well this is going to work with the new microphones and things like that. I was able to walk away and still be able to have you guys hear me. I think I've got my gain and everything figured out. So the, the big thing is trying to stay out of the red on this thing. So I've got myself at minus 18 on the gain. So it's a really good system. Big shout out to Jared over at uh, Neves Knives for for put for telling me what um, what type of microphones I really needed to get, and I'm gonna try and do some more of these uh, as soon as I start this new job. Uh, as soon as I start this new job, I'm not gonna have as much time to do as many videos, so I might do live feeds like this um, pretty often because I can do them straight from my phone. It seems to be getting good really good interaction and things like that. So um, stay tuned to the channel. I'm not gonna like put up a schedule for the live feeds. I'm definitely just going to do, um, I'm just gonna do them. Uh, you might see them on whatever days you don't see a video going up at noon. You might see me here. Uh, awesome sounding auto, not too loud, not required. I, well, I've been playing around with a lot. And like the thing is I am currently um, playing with the dog clear <laughs> across the room in case you guys I, I currently was across the room and walked back. So if you guys didn't realize it while I was doing stuff, I was walking back and forth around around the studio. So it gives me a little bit of latitude that I didn't have before. If you guys haven't dropped a like, please drop a like on the way out. Uh, anybody got any questions about any of this stuff on the knives? Any of these knives that are here, I can let you guys know. We got like five more minutes, I'll run this. Um, but I've got a bunch of knives put out here. So, um, None of the knives that you're seeing right now are for sale. Not all of them are mine. Um, I, I'm not, yeah, the audio's top notch. Well, that's what happens when you dump an extra. With everything that I've got for the mount and the cords and the proper stuff, 
and then the adapter for me to be able to charge my device while I'm still recording uh, and using the microphones. I've probably got about $400 tied up in just the, the one microphone, uh, but definitely, definitely is an upgrade to what we were doing before. Um, you're going to see a video coming out probably next week, I believe, next week. I'm going to talk about the differences between the skiff bearings in this one and the stock bearings that are in this one. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about it still. Uh, there's some differences and uh, I want to break this knife in a little bit. So I am going to do a video about that because I don't 100% agree with the whole concept of the skiff bearings. I had people say that it's not so much about the... Um, I really want the Tosh, CKF Tashi Justice. Uh, he's not, he promised me he wasn't going to tear that knife apart, Zach. He, he, he knows how much I love that knife. Um, but what I was going to say is some people were saying, oh, well, the skiff bearings aren't so much about smoothness. It's about the stability and longevity. And I was like, I have knives that, let me get it out here. I've owned this knife. This knife came to me before the channel started. Um, I got this in 2015 before the channel started. It runs in a plastic bearing race, multi-row bearing system in plastic. Um, it absolutely has held up. I have had zero issues with the bearing race in that. My Norseman uses a plastic bearing race. And so people are like, oh, well, the plastic or the, the, the bent. Um, to tell you the truth, this is one of the smoothest knives I own. And the bearings that are in this are some tiny bearings that are down inside a bent over, punched out. Um, it's a punched out bearing race. It's punched plastic. Uh, the Yan Knives double-ended thing. You mean the EMW? Yeah, I believe, I, I absolutely think it's worth it. Um, I did a video about it. If you want to go back and find it, I did a video about it. And there's a purchase link for it in there. It's a great, great knife. If you if you like want to, there's, there'll be a purchase link in almost all of my videos to get it on Blade HQ. So, or you can just go to Blade HQ and search it. I, I absolutely love it. It spends a lot of time in my pocket. But what I was saying about the bearings, I think that like Bob Trezuela said in the video I did with him, it's not about the knife being sharp. It's about knowing how to cut paper. A lot of it is showmanship. A lot of it is sales not trying to like diss on the grift, but the skiff bearings are a solution looking for a problem. They really are. Um, the bearings that were in these Ferrum Forge knives, if you were to take one of these knives apart and look at it, they're a very, very small bearing race with small bearings and they look as to be some of the cheapest bearings you would get and yet they are some of the smoothest knives I've ever had. It's about not so much about the bearings, but knowing how to make the knife that's around it. Uh, the bearings that are into this EMW are not like a big fancy bearing set. And this is one of the smoothest small knives that you're gonna wanna find. There's zero friction in that. And it's dirty. Like that just gets carried all the time. Look how dirty it is. It's still that smooth. There are a lot of products that wind up on the market that I think are snake oil. The skiff bearings, in my opinion, are not something that you absolutely need. And people are like, well, they're not that expensive. They're like 15 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, but that's 15 bucks that I could put in the gas tank for my daughter to drive my car to the, the, the ice rink so I don't have to do it or drive herself to school and drive herself because now she's gotten accepted at UCSD. She's going to use that car to drive herself to and from school. I think I don't I, I think it's more of a snake oil thing. Now there are some products that I don't believe are snake oil, which is KPL. KPL absolutely does exactly what it says it is. Ryan really got the formulation on this right. When they say that it uh, it keeps the grit in suspension, it's not a lie. This I use on this is my second bottle of this. I use this ultralight on my out the front knives. It does a great job on them. And it also is great when I'm doing sharpening on an oil stone, like a, an old school Arkansas stone. This is what I use because it does keep the stone from loading. Absolutely. Someone said the main thing was the lateral stability, but does it tighten the pivot? It seems terribly excessive. I haven't had any problems with lateral stability. That's what I'm saying. If you put your knife back, to, if you put your knife back together properly, 
and get your pivot tension proper, there is no lateral stability. The bearings are what's touching. Not Okay, now, now I gotta talk about this. The race is not what's touching. The bearings are what's touching. The bearings are now squeezed in between two pivot points, the metal of the blade and the metal of the scales. There's no, the, 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 the thing that they're in has nothing to do with it. Hence why IKBS worked so well, it, they weren't in a race. The bearings are what's making contact, not the race. The race doesn't fucking touch anything. And for people to say that, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, oh, well, it prevents the, like, no. The bearings themselves do that. The bearings are touching all the way around. They're the ones accept accepting the force. The race is just a way to keep them in there so that they don't fall out when you take your knife apart. IKBS was the bearings that were in knives for years, and there was no race. They were just in there. They sat in a track inside, like inside the, the blade. And if you ever took an IKBS knife apart without knowing, and I'm just like, you know, like I, I just think, like I said, I think it is a problem. I think it's a solution looking for a problem. How long should I go from lubing a, I haven't been messing with a knife, has been sitting in my case, should I reapply every couple months? Um, this stuff doesn't dry out. It doesn't evaporate. It's not like REM oil. If you're using KPL, it's not like REM oil. This will kind of dry up a little bit, but it doesn't leave really a residue. And I really don't, I'll, I'll tell you what I do these days. <laughs> this, uh, what I will do is knives that I have put KPL on and used KPL on, I will take them and I'll run them under hot water. And then I'll test the action after they dry really good, right? After I get the knife all dried up and I know it's dry inside, I will then, if I think I need to, put a drop of KPL in from a point where you have closer access to the bearings. So you can see the bearings in there. See how there's that cut out there on this knife? When I'm going to do it, I just put a drop of oil on either side of that, drop it down in if I was going to do it. And that's typically what I do with all of my knives. This knife hasn't been cleaned and taken apart. See how there's a... a, a a blue plastic bearing race in there. This knife is 10 years old, and this is probably one of my most carried knives. No problem with the bearing race on that. No problem with lateral stability. No problem with the, the, the bearing race breaking down. This has plastic bearings in it on a thousand dollar knife. Plastic bearing race. The bearings are what's important, not what they're in. The, the, bearing, the bearing race has zero importance on the equation. KPL is also food safe, so it's perfect for multifunction use knives. Yeah. Um, question, how do you like the KPL blade shield? I'm really curious, I still. Um, so let's talk about how much of it I've used because there's very little, very little left in this bottle. And I use this all the time. It's great for pretty much everything. What was the react? So this is, carbon, this is the Carbon Fiber Riat Horizon D, uh, carbon fiber and titanium. I did the anodizing on this and I actually polished the carbon fiber ever so slightly so you could see it a little bit better. So um, I, I try not to dismantle knives anymore. There's gonna be a video talking about that, but I've got, I got some stuff going on. I have definitely got some stuff going on with, with the nerve damage and it's starting to affect both my hands. My hands shake really severely sometimes. Um, clean off KPL, apply KPL both sides of the bearings and then on the detent ball as well. I, I will tell you detent ball uses KPL heavy, but to give yourself a little bit of a leg up to make your life easier, find a way to store it upside down so that it stays in the tube um, because it's so thick that you'll squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and it'll start to come out and then you'll let go and it sucks the air right back up in. And then you just, it's, just, it's easier if you just have it already displaced and it won't come out. All I did was put a Kirkland's water bottle cap and super glued it on the end of it. So my KPL always sits upside down like that. Um, this is definitely, I will also say Tyler, if you're not hitting the actual pivot itself, you should. You, typically what I do is when I put the knife together, the first set of bearings go in, I put a drop on it and then run the applicator up the actual pivot post. 
and then put the next set of bearings on top and then put a drop on the bearing itself. That way I hit bearings, the actual pivot itself that the blade is going to make contact with and the top set of bearings. So yeah. Any other questions? Like I, I, I don't mind doing this. I can stand here and do this. I'm just literally standing in my studio with the door open um, enjoying a nice, beautiful day, talking about knives with you guys. One of my favorite things to do. I do need, I think I'm out of coffee. Um, what I was saying about the KPL uh, blade shield. If you have residue of anything on your blade, this is absolutely amazing. It removes, this removes um, adhesive better than anything I've had. You spray it on the blade and you let it sit. You spray both sides and it'll work. And people are like, well, you can do the same thing with acetone. You can do the same thing with rubbing alcohol. And I do keep rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle here for cleaning bearings and things like that. The thing about this is you can put, you can spray this on. Yes, absolutely. I put that. And then another thing you could get too. So anyway, let me put, you spray this on, you let it sit for like 45 seconds. And then you come back and you wipe it with a microfiber cloth and it will take off heavy. Let me see. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's some heavy residue on that. We'll spray this one. I'll spray it over here. I don't like getting it on my, on my uh, actual filming mat. So it, um, it won't evaporate. So I can spray the blade with it like that. And we're just going to let it sit for a second. And then... Um, I think the only reason I would go for skips or something is I get the knife loose and the bearings like sure. Go yeah. Well, the whole thing is there are very few knives these days that don't have caged bearings. Um, so LCV, what's up, buddy? Um, yeah, I, there are very few knives that are running uncaged bearings these days. Usually it's something that's like a really small knife. And if you guys haven't dropped a like, please do so. If you want to support the channel, drop a super chat ever so kind of, um, oh crap. I can't figure who, I can't remember who did it now. Um, Keen's custom blades dropped one. Really appreciate it. But, okay. So you can see how this has not evaporated, but you can see how it's starting to raise that. Uh, oh, you can see it's starting to raise that up and it, you can see that that adhesive that's on there is starting to get broken down. So it's, uh, it's a great, great product. And then the other thing that I was gonna say, if you're gonna store knives for a long time, especially if they're carbon fiber, this came to me from Carnivora when they sent me that big monster um, Mako. So they sent me this and I've been putting it on some of my knives that are prone to rust and it definitely is working. I think they sell this on their website for like 15 bucks. They sent it to me for free when they sent me the replacement knife to, for me to do the review on the actual Mako that's in, in a good one. So it's 15 bucks. This absolutely is great. So it's, uh, it is 100% food safe, all natural and food safe. It is beeswax, almond oil, and coconut oil. So Tyler Payne, um, you're, there's a, you can't put big ones up because then I can't read them. I have Streamlabs set to a certain number of characters. I think it's 200 characters. So this is absolutely one of the best things for knives that are prone to rust. Um, it's definitely going to go on this one. So what happened? What happened? What did, what did he do? Let's see. Oh, I, I thought maybe he had said exactly why. And so... Um, yeah, so you can see how that has soaked into that adhesive. And that was some thick adhesive. Sometimes you need a couple. But that blade shield, that KPL blade shield. Look at that. Adhesive is usually a pain to deal with. And it just softens it up to the point where, especially that was packing tape that I had cut through with this raccoon. And I mean, it was on there. So... There you go. And then it leaves a really nice, it's got a wax that's in it that will leave it a, a good uh, rust resistant finish on it. So 
Guys, I think I'm going to end this. We've been doing this for a little over an hour. Uh, I got to get all this ready. My wife will be home in just a few minutes, and uh, I'm pretty sure... Well, I mean, what am I acting out on battery life on these? These these things last the battery on these microphones. Um, pretty good. I get about seven hours on this. Uh, I, I can I can go I can film multiple days on on a charge. Well, I can I can go two days on a charge before I uh, before I need to recharge the microphones. So. Yeah, guys, if you haven't dropped a like on your way up, please do so. This has been a lot of fun. I'm going to keep doing these, these way, this way. It's easier um, than trying to set up for a full live feed. It seems to get better engagement when I do the vertical like this. Do I have any experience shaping carbon fiber? Yeah, it's fucking horrible. There are some things that I will never do again. Carbon fiber handles on a knife is one of them. So... Yeah, one of those things that I just will never do again. Make sure you guys go check out that public. It's a public Gilded server, but it's just like Discord. If you know how to use Discord, you know how to use Gilded. Um, and if you want to become a member, I am. I haven't filmed it yet. I am giving away. Let me show you guys what I'm giving away to the paying members. Paying members are getting, and I've been holding off because there's been a. I haven't done a lot of live feeds. And I haven't talked about it very much. I figured I'd give everybody a chance. Um, the paying members are getting this this month. This is the Legatus by QSP Knives, M390, titanium, carbon fiber. It is a great knife. I just never carry it. I carried it for the review, and I put it in the case. I honestly forgot I even had it, and uh, it deserves a home. So it's not brand new. It actually has been sharpened. So... Paying members will be giving, will be getting this. I will be announcing that on the private Discord, which is another reason. Well, I might do it on the public Discord as well. That's another reason that you need to go to the Discord because if you're a member and I'm giving this away, it's the only place I'm notifying people is on the Gilded. So, yeah, guys, let me get off of here. I love you guys. Take it what is on positive. Shaping carbon fiber, you make shred carbon fiber with byproducts, right? I don't, I've never made it. I have definitely ground it. I've made handles out of it, and it is a complete and utter pain. Uh, you can't even drill a straight hole through it. Uh, it just, it will cause your bit to weave. Even, I don't care, even if you've got it cranked down, you're using a carbide, you wouldn't think that there's a lot of flex in a drill bit, but it absolutely will flex, and then you're, you're nothing lines up. So, can people can... People can send knives in for the giveaway? Yes. Uh, if you send something in, I typically will do a review. And if you tell me it's for the channel, I'll, if you want it as a giveaway, then it will be a giveaway. I'm not slicey dicey. If you send something for a giveaway, it will be a giveaway. That knife that I just showed you guys that is the giveaway was sent to me by the company. And I, uh, I absolutely, absolutely am going to give it away. It wasn't sent to me as a giveaway, but it's going to be a giveaway. I have knives that are sent in for giveaway. Uh, if they're slated as giveaway, they will be given away. I never sell knives. I never sell knives that come into the channel unless it's something that somebody's asking me to sell for them. So any of the knives that you see, I know that people argue with me. I don't think it's right for me to take something that was given to the channel and then sell it. Um, some people are like, well, that's the price. The, the knife is the price of the review. I would agree with that. A lot of times, but then a lot of times you see those same knives wind up being sold. I don't necessarily agree with that. It's one of the things that Slicey Dicey was doing. I know that not all the reviewers agree with me, and that's fine. So they don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying that's something you won't see me do. So if you're sending something in for review and then to be done as a giveaway, absolutely, that's what's going to happen. So, all right, guys, I'm out of here. I love you. I'll take it easy and I'll see you in the next video.